Right, welcome back. Today is uh, January the 15th, I believe. Let me just double check my little upper screen. Yep, January 15th, Saturday. It's approximately, uh, it's approximately, I believe, 3 in the afternoon. And today we're going to read a book called Joe Biden, A Year of Hope. Hardship and purpose called Promise Me Dad. Now, this book is a number one New York Times bestseller, includes new material. It is a book that honest, raw, and rich in detail. People who have lost someone will genuinely take comfort from what Biden has to say. The New York Times, All right? So Biden splices a heartbreaking story with an election story and a foreign affairs story. And in so doing, he offers something for everyone, no matter which strand draws you in. The New York Times book review. Biden exudes humanity throughout the book. He lays bare his emotions and vulnerabilities at losing a son with so much promise and PR. Promise me, Dad, give me your word that no matter what happens, you're going to be all right. Joe Biden gave his eldest son, uh, Bew, his word. Mom, can you close my door, please? Can, can, can you close my door? I'm too lazy. Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, I'm reading the book. That's why. Uh, all right, so uh, the plot from this book. It's a uh, promise me, Dad. Chronicles. What would be the most momentous and challenging year in Joe Biden's extraordinary life and career? While his son fought for and then lost his life, the vice president balanced the twin imperatives of living up to his responsibilities to both his country and his family. The year brought real triumph and accomplishment and wrenching pain, but even in the worst times, Biden was able to lean on the strength of his long, deep bonds with his family on his faith and on his deepening friendship with President Barack Obama. Writing with pregnancy and immediacy, Joe Biden allows readers to feel the, ur the urgency of each moment, to experience the days when he felt unable to move forward as well as the days when he felt like he could not afford to stop. Featuring a new epilogue and touching eulogies from Barack Obama and Ashley and Hunter Biden, Promise Me Dad is a story of how family and friendship sustain us and how hope, promise, purpose, and action can guide us through the pain of personal loss into the light of a new future. Joe Biden is a representative letter uh Joe Biden is a represented Delaware for 36 years in the U.S. Senate before serving as, a, as the 47th Vice President of the United States from 2009 to, to, to 2017. Since leaving the White House, Vice President Biden continues his legacy of expanding opportunity for all with the creation of the Biden Foundation, the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement at the University of Pennsylvania and the Biden Institute of Domestic Policy at the University of Delaware. There's a little C in a circle. It says Beowulf Sheehan. Cover designed by Kate Hayes. Flat Tyrion Books. www.flatironbooks.com 175th Avenue, New York, New York. Zip code is 10010. Printed in the United States of America. This book is priced at $17.99. Now in Canada, it's worth $25. Bucks. Uh, the ISBN number is 978-1-250-17169-6. Barcode is 
greater, greater parenthesis, greater than. The little symbol that says greater than. And then it says another bar chord. It's 9, 7, 8, 1, 2, 5, 0, 1, 7, 1, 6, 9, 6. So this book, apparently, I started reading it last year. It came out last year. When I bought this book, I honestly thought Joe Biden wrote the book. So I started reading it. And then next thing you know, a uh, person that... Uh, Comment on my on my uh, comment. Really broke my heart when he told me that this book wasn't really written by Joe Biden. Because honestly, I was reading it halfway through, and I was really, I was really, I was really appalled. I was feeling like if the book was really talking to me by Joe Biden. Let's see, uh, the New York Times, The People, The Vanity Fair, The Washington Post, Entertainment Weekly, The Newsday, USA Today, Publishers Weekly, Kirkus Reviews, uh, Bustled, or Bustled, and HuffPost. They all uh, praise this book as being really good. Uh, this book is dedicated also by Biden. There's also other books called Promises to Keep on Life and Politics. Also by Joe Biden. So that's what really tricked me right there. I thought this book was really written by Joe Biden. And the publisher is uh, Flatteron Flat, Flat Books in New York. Flat, Flatteron or Flat, Flatteron Books. Spelled F-L-A-T-I-R-O-N. Let's see where this book was published. Published. Uh, Promise Me Dad has a copyright of uh, 2017 by Joe Biden. Eulogies copyright 2019 by Ashley Biden and Hunter Biden. All rights reserved printed in the United States of America. For information, address Flowerton Books is 175th Avenue, New York, New York, 10010 zip code. www.flatteron or flatteronbooks.com Designed by Steven Seigman. The Library of Congress has cataloged the hardcover editions as follows. Names Biden Joseph R. Author. Title Promise Me That A Year of Hope, Hardship, and Purpose. Joe Biden. Description First Edition New York. Flatterion Books. Identifiers LCCN 2017041080. ISBN number 9781250171672 hardcover. Uh sign edition number is 9781250183941 is the sign edition. The ebook identify identify LCEN number is 989 Actually, I'm gonna restart that number again. The ebook identifier identifiers identifier number is nine seven eight one two one. Actually, I'm gonna restart again because I made a mistake. I'm talking too fast. The ebook identifier number is nine seven. Eight one two five zero one seven one six eight nine. The subjects L C S H Biden Joseph R. Biden Pew, uh, 1960, 1969 through 2015. Vice President's United States Biography. Fathers and Sons United States Biography. Cancer Patients United States Biography. President's United States Election 2016, United States Politics and Government 2009 through 2017. Classification LCC number is E, letter E, A, 8. Again, classification LCC number is letter E, 8, the number 8, 4, 0, dot, 8, dot, B, as in basketball, 
five, four, A as in Adam, three, 2017, 2017. The DC number is nine, seven, dot, nine, three, two, zero, nine, two, B, double dash or triple dash, DC, two, three, LC record available at at the website known as HTTPS uh, two little dots two little dash parentheses or uh, parallel I don't know what those are called LCCN dot LOC dot gov dash two zero one seven zero four one zero eight zero ISBN is nine seven eight dash one dash two five zero dash one seven six. Actually, I'm gonna repeat that number again. This is a trade paperback ISBN number. ISBN number is the uh, nine seven eight dash one dash two five zero dash one seven one six nine dash six is the trade paperback number. Our books may be purchased in bulk for promotional, educational, or business use. Please contact your local bookseller or the uh, Millikin Corporate and Premium Sales Department at 1-800-221-7945. Again, please contact your local bookseller or the Macmillan Corporate and Premium Sales Department at one dash eight zero zero dash two two one dash seven nine four five uh the extension number will be five four four two or by email at mcmillan special markets at mcmillan dot com first first uh, flat horn books paperback edition number twenty eighteen ten nine eight seven six five Four, three, two, one. So this book is a book written for Natalie and Hunter. Look at it. Natalie and Hunter. Now it's got a, a book of contents here. One is uh, Biden's family Thanksgiving. Two speaks of how, how to have a purpose. Three is solace. Spell S O L. A C E. Four, how to trust, or more, or just simply trust. Doesn't say how to. Tr I'm just emphasizing. You know? Six, uh, it has to be you. Seven, calculate risks. Eight, home base. Nine, you have to tell them the truth. Ten, can you stay? Eleven, uh, run, Joe, run. And then it has an epilogue, spelled E P E E E E, spelled E P I L O G U E. Afterward, uh, Bill's gift, and then it has a eulogy, -E, spelled E U L O G Y, for B U, spelled B E A U. I believe that's his son's name, and it ends with acknowledgments on page two. 89. And again it says uh, Rules for happiness Something to do Someone to love Something to hope for Immanuel Kant it says Rules for happiness Something to do Someone to love Something to hope for Immanuel Kant Promise me that is the name of the book. Biden Family Thanksgiving Chapter One. But nowhere, nowhere in the book, nowhere in the book does it tell you that this book is not written by Joe Biden. Nowhere in the book does it tell you that this book is written by Joe Biden. I actually had to be humiliated on social media by a random commentator telling me that that book's not written by Joe Biden. 
so sad I had to eat donuts for a whole month just because I wasn't that smart to detect that small detail problem. Now I'm eating donuts. But I'm trying to read a lot of books about the world. See that map in the back? Cost me thirty dollars. Cost me thirty dollars. I live in a country where fortunately the rich could be making up to a hundred million dollars within a year. Fortunately, not even me uh, with the best job I ever had, which was Uber, not even me I could make that much. I was only making what, like $40,000 a year? Yo, mom, read the book, mom. What's happening? Yo, mom, what? Chunky? Mom, mom, read the book, what are you doing? Anyways, uh, so that's just the introduction, you know, again, this is my YouTube channel, so if you're here, you're here to uh, try to understand me as a human being, you know, because I can't afford a doctor, doctors are too expensive here in Los Angeles, I'm doing an autobiography of myself, because I can't even afford a goddamn psychologist, which by the way, to me, they're useless, because now I realize that you yourself are your best psychologist because you yourself are you at the end of the day. I started going to this church called the World Mission Society Church of God. And they taught me a lot of valuable lessons. Man. When I went in there, I remember I used to smoke a lot of pot. So my thoughts in my mind were very twisted from when I was in middle school in San Fernando Middle School and in San Fernando High School. And my thoughts were so mixed up that I was questioning who I was as a person. Even my own facial expressions of even how I look, how I stare, how I even look like. Started to, to dif differentiate because I couldn't really understand who my father was. I was raised by my own physical mother. So with my own physical mother's understanding of love, that's all I grew up with. So me going to school, I used to try to look up to the most toughest kids in school. And I wanted to just pretend to be them. I wanted to pretend to be them. So I started dressing like them. I started talking like them. Man, I even started walking like them. But what did this gave me? This gave me a realization that in life it is very important to have a father figure in your life so that he could discipline you to be the best version of yourself. So to this day, I don't have a father figure. I only have a digital version father figure, which my father was in Mexico. He speaks to me through the phone, through Facebook Messenger app, which now you could apparently talk face to face like this. Be able to communicate. So, why is this book so precious to me? Because what Joe Biden has done throughout his years is very inspiring, you know, because what if I were to pay attention in school? Because to this day, I'm a high school dropout. I have no education. Apparently, I'm a peasant. In the eyes of educated people. People who actually finished high school. People that went to college. People who went to university and actually got a, a university degree to become a doctor. And off they go to being actual normal human beings. As they call, as they call themselves. 
in in the eyes of them, I'm just a peasant. Didn't finish high school, and I'm uneducated. So why does this book matter to me? Because let's say I did pay attention in high school, and I didn't have the type of transparency reflection of what I was trying to do because I didn't have a father figure and instead avoided that route and actually did focus on myself and I had a father figure my dad was here in the United States with me instead of Mexico where he's still at and actually uh, raised me good and actually took me to a charter school and I was really focused on myself and I didn't go to a public school I actually wanted to focus my uh my mind into becoming a politician. Joe Biden's a very inspirational guy, you know. He actually went to school just like Barack Obama, and he sat where he sat because he studied. That's why this book's very, uh, you know, interesting to me. Back in 2012, or I think 2020, when this book came out, I say 2012 because that's when Barack Obama uh, released uh, DACA. DACA so. Uh, Defer action for childhood arrivals, which is what I am currently stated as in the government system. Now, my issue is that in today's society, the governments, they praise prisons to be more educational way of rehabilitating people instead of Investing in public schools Because apparently a charter school Is just the same thing as public schools it's The same thing But what differentiates dif Different A-C-E-S I can't even spell the word What difference A charter school A charter high school in a public high school Is the type of quality of teachers that they get so I remember in my schools, these teachers were very, very worldly educated. They had the mind of a peasant like me. And perhaps they didn't have a father figure either. They were just being paid to educate us. Heck, I even heard of stories that teachers were having uh, sexual intercourse with students. And keep in mind, this is high school. Just to have a high, uh, uh, a higher grade. Now this was, of course, and I understand during the uh, Iraq War in 2004. So it must have been very difficult for a teacher to teach. So I know many people around my area in San Fernando Valley, they try to think, oh, well that guy listens to rap music like Young Dove or like in his lyrics he says, uh, 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 like, like that one song called uh, Cup. Cutthroat by John Dove it says, I'm gonna be richer than you, teacher, when I grow up. Well, maybe he wasn't talking about physically, but spiritually, you know. But, anyways, what that is trying to say, because actually, John Dove is brand new, he actually came out in 2017. So, I don't think I was listening to this music when I was, uh, when I was in high school. When I was in high school, it was 2007 through 2012. That was my last year in high school that I could recall. And that's when DACA came out. And I remember that uh, even in high school, which was very different for me, I struggled to understand what teachers were all about because uh, I was suppressed, suppressed by a lot of mischievous people. People who actually thought of themselves, and this is students, higher than themselves. And honestly, when I was in school, uh, I was uh, I was pushed to hang out with a group of people to start consuming cannabis, and the consumption of cannabis. Led me to a misunderstanding of my mindset. So I began to be in school and class. I remember science. I really wanted to pay attention. In one of the science classes. And this is in Silmore High School. And this was in 2011. They had a mechanical class right there. As a privilege. He 
you do that to be in mechanics you had to be privileged meaning you had to be really educated but there was other students who were already in groups of people right not like myself cuz i'm by myself i'm in a school that has close to 3000 students or it could be 5000 all squished into classrooms of 30 people and i remember that to be in mechanic class it was called a privilege or more like a that's a word for it but apparently it was a, like a special thing you get if you were to do good in your grades now when i was in science class I remember I tried paying attention, so I began to try to focus, but at the same time, there were so many other people trying to focus at the same time, that when you try being the smart person in the class, it's like you're copying other people's work. Now, what do I mean by that? Search up the word on Google, what does it mean to be a copycat? Because I wasn't being a copycat, it's just influential forced copycatting so let's say i'm already ahead in my studies right and somebody begins to alternate that understanding into their mindset because of cannabis consumption cannabis consumption is the feeling of copying other people's mental work pretending to be them mono glaffy is the word I found it actually, it's monoglaphy. Monoglaphy is like, oh, let's say I'm pretending to be smarter than him. Let me just do that again. So then, little stuff like uh, imaging, copying imaging begins to take place. And uh, examples such as uh, the science class that I was speaking of. It goes into very detailed stuff about what life is. What is uh, biology in school? Science biology. So I remember I began to pay so much detail that other people began to be envy. And they try to talk like me. And I began to notice that. That really pissed me off. So I remember I used to be this angry kid all the time because I was like, wait a second, I'm talking and this motherfucker wants to talk like me, but little understanding was that I myself was learning from them. So I didn't have a father figure. I remember that day in science class, I remember they took me to the back of the class and they beat me up. I still remember. True story. Remember, just because of that, because uh, I guess I didn't have a tone of voice coming from a father figure. I remember they... The students themselves, they removed me from class. They were like, hey, man, what's going on? Why are you trying to be like us? You know, like, literally, physically, mentally. I'm like, look, man, I consume cannabis. You know, I'm just trying to focus on school. You know, and like, hiding exactly my emotion of never telling anybody that I never had a father figure. I've always pretended to be a rich kid, just like them. Got beat up. Told me to stay away. I started growing in depression. I remember that very same day, I just... Hop the fence, I still remember. Hop the fence from school, it was a regular day. School that starts from 8 in the morning and then finishes at 3 p.m. I left high school and never came back.
So now we're in 2012. And apparently the government still thinks that building prisons is more fast acting kind of rehabilitational space, time space to control people. The book promised me, promised me dance with my Joe Biden. And exactly what I talk about, it's in this book. But, in the version of me not being who I am today, but me being the person who actually went to school, who actually, since I came here into the U.S. when I was eight years old, had a father figure, and actually... Was able to go to a charter high school and finish my education system. And this is where the word solace comes in. The understanding of solace. The understanding of trust. The being able to stay busy. The the belief that it has to be me. The belief that calculating risks. And heading towards a home base. That... Uh, whatever I do, I have to tell them the truth. And if I can stay here in the States, I can run to become a president. Now you might think, oh, oh, but you were an immigrant, right? Let's say that was so. But let's say at this age, I'm 27 years old. What if I was already into uh, law school and I had already finished my uh state degree to become a lawyer and at this very age I wasn't here where I'm at pretending to be a law school teacher like I still am in a way in my mind I graduated high school but in my own under understanding of my world my lawyer educational degree is now continuing by me finding little data that I find through Bookstores, public libraries, educating myself. In a way, I feel like a state level lawyer where I don't even need to graduate, you know? Like some of these students pay for their educational, you know? You don't need that. Now, many people will disagree with me with this. They say, oh, but your knowledge is very low. Oh, but you don't have enough knowledge about this and that. I'm not really going against the state at the moment. I'm not really going against the city at the moment. Heck, I'm not even doing anything at the moment. But what I'm trying to get to the point is that in reality, the educational system in America is broken. To monopoly, to enslavement, the type of work they're doing is arbitrary. Words that my mind can't even comprehend yet because that type of English literature is still not yet fulfilled. But it's willing to be undeveloped. But my, my current circumstances are keeping me at that low profile life. Or as they say, the low life. Whenever uh, I myself try to go to uptown, meaning where the rich people are, where the real uh, state lawyers are, and and those people that actually went to school, they graduated, they have doctor's degrees. If I go hang around with them, they go like, hey, look, is that low life? Ha, 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 ha. But in reality, are they smarter than me? They're just hiding a lie that they themselves are phonies, that they themselves are fakes.
Let's be real. If they were real people, they would try to do what their abiding paper status of what they're supposed to be doing, right? They will be literally trying to figure out word by word what needs to be done, what has been done in the past, and have a future plan to get things done to actually put their knowledge to work but instead they're using that knowledge to just do easy work get paid in annual income which by the way doctors here in the US get paid four hundred thousand dollars a year more than US presidents get paid and then they just start building houses and they just leave them empty because apparently nobody bought them. Wasting money. Wasting time. Creating work that is meaningless. And once they have a group of people doing the construction work. They go on cameras and they say hey I'm doing work. While well, they're off on vacation. Hanging out with prostitutes. And having fun. Corrupted fun The devil's work So you decide what kind of people you want to be today The person who took the blue pill Or the person who took the red pill Wants to lead his soul straight into hell Because in the Bible it says That what goes around comes around So today words might be spoken and they might be sweet to the ear. But God said, be the salt of the world. Don't be the sweeter, the sweet talkers. Hey, you know, adding adding sugar to people's cup of joe, joe every day, you know. But God said, be the salt. So have a good day. And if, again, you're in my YouTube channel. You're here because you want to learn the truth. The truth of what is life. What is life? Once had a friend. And I say once had a friend because he's doing 15 years in prison. His name is Isaiah. A really good friend of mine. Why do I say I used to have? Because I can't even talk to him. He's in prison. I don't even know how to write to him. I had to give the letter to his mom so that he could send the letter to him. That's why I say I used to have a friend. Because in my mind, for some reason, he's my enemy. That friend taught me a lot about life. I remember the first times that uh, we began to uh, smoke weed. It wasn't by force. Because when I started smoking weed, it was way before this friend named myself. So then... So then now fast forward to 2022, this friend named myself, doing 15 years, could be out in 10, who knows. But he was 24 years old when he went inside. Now he's going to be 35. I'm 27. I got to step it up and try to figure out what life is on my own. Because obviously in this world that we live in, it's a monopoly, man. To monopoly. Stay tuned for chapter one of Joe Biden.